بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا So today we have reached with the author Al-Hajawi رحمه الله تعالى He says in his famous text زاد المستقنع في اختصار المقنع He says باب إخراج الزكاة The chapter pertaining to the actual giving of the zakah, how it should be given, etc. So he says, the author, وَيَجِبُ عَلَى الْفَوْرِ يَجِبُ عَلَى الْفَوْرِ It's imperative that it's given as soon as it becomes obligatory, straight away. There should be no delay. عَلَى الْفَوْرِ What the leel, the evidence for that, that it should be given straight away without delay, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتَهُ الزَّكَاءِ and Allah says, and give the zakah in many places in the Quran. والأمر يقتدي الفورية. And الأمر, a command in the Quran with the Sunnah, dictates فورية, dictates that it should be done immediately. And also, the ulama they say, وَلِأَنَّ حَاجَةَ الْفُقَرَاءِ مُتَعَلِّقَةٌ بِهَا And also because the needs of the fuqara are attached to that money. So if we delay the giving of the zakah, we are delaying the fulfilling of their needs, which is an obligation upon those who have the money. The author, he says, With the person having the ability. So it should be done fawran, it should be done immediately, if the person has the ability to do so. So an example of somebody that may not have the ability, if he's on a journey, a person's on a journey in a distant land, and he's unable to access his money. So he's got money above the nisab, he knows he needs to pay zakah. So we don't say to that person, okay, now go out and take a loan from somebody in the land you're in, so that you can pay zakah. Rather, as soon as he's able to access his money, he should pay the zakah. So the author, he said, imkanihi with the ability to do so. Because Allah says in the Quran, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah and fulfill His commands as much as you are able to do so. The author, he said, إِلَّا لِي ضُرُورَةٍ Unless there is a need. Okay, unless there is a need, meaning that if there is a need, then in this situation, like the previous situation, uh, you don't, pay the zakah immediately. You pay it once that need or that situation which causes a need for you to delay paying the zakah is removed. So example, one of the examples that ulama they give, they say for example if a person's in a town and in that town it's become, you know, uh, the crime rates are very high and it's known that if I go out and I pay my zakah then the bandits of that town, they will be able to identify that I have wealth, especially if it's gold and silver, and they're more than likely to attack me. So in this situation, it's allowed for me to delay my zakah until the situation is safe for me to pay the zakah. So illa li darura, unless there is a need for me to delay, is explained by the example that I've given you. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith collected by Ibn Majah, la darr wa la dirar, there is no harming, nor is there any uh, reciprocating of harm. There is no harming and there is no bringing about of harm or receiving harm. The author, he said, فَإِنْ مَنَعَهَا جَهْدًا لِوَجُوبِهَا If the person who's supposed to pay the zakah prevents paying the zakah, obstinately rejecting its obligation. So the person is refusing to pay the zakah, obstinately refusing its obligation upon him. Kafara arifun bil hukm. Then this person becomes a kafir if he knew the ruling of its obligation. If he knew that it was an obligation upon him as a Muslim to pay zakah, then he refuses to do so, then this person has now become a kafir. And his wealth is taken from him and he is killed. So, a point to mention here that the ulama they say this person who's now become a kafir due to rejecting the obligation of paying zakah whilst he knows that it's an obligation, meaning that he's lived in a Muslim country or he had access to Islamic knowledge, so he knows that it's an obligation upon him. However, he refuses to pay the zakah, then this person has become a kafir. So they say that even if this person agrees to pay the zakah, so he says, for example, okay, I'm going to pay the zakah, though I disbelieve in it as an obligation, but I will pay it because I don't want to be punished by you people. 
They said even in this situation, even if he pays it, then he's still taken as a kafir, a murtad, somebody who's left to fall of Islam, because Allah wa Rasuluhu, Alladhani awjabaha, because he belied, belied he uh, disbelieved in Allah and the Prophet وسلم, the two whom brought to us the command of having to pay the zakat. And the ulama, of course, as mentioned in the statement of the author, it's taken from him, bil ijbar, bil quwa wal ijbar, it's taken from him forcefully. Wa yaqumu bi dhalik waliul amr. And the one who does the taking forcefully from this one who's refusing to pay is not any old person on the street, rather, it's the leader of the Muslims of the state, or the person, or the people, or the body that he has put in charge for dealing with such situations. <coughs> the illa, the reason, the uh, jurisprudic reason for why the wealth is still taken from this person forcefully, even though he's now become a kafir, the illa, as the ulama they say, because at the time when the zakah became obligatory upon this person, at the time of the nisab and the year had passed, the person was a Muslim. Right? He became a non-Muslim after refusing to pay the zakah. So he was a Muslim at the time when the zakah became obligatory upon him. And attached to his wealth at that time is the rights of the fuqara. That's why it's taken from him. And also, as the ulama mentioned, that um, this person who has now become a murtad for refusing to pay the zakah, before he is executed, for his uh, leaving the fold of Islam in a, in a Muslim state um, by the appropriate authorities before he's executed he's going to be put into prison for three days and whilst in prison for three days he's going be, to be treated in the best of manner five-star manner given good clothing good food and he's going to be spoken to in the best of manners to encourage him to pay the zakah and to accept the obligation of zakah upon him as a Muslim and to know what the consequences are going to be if he doesn't pay the zakah. So he's given three days to make tawbah, to repent and to pay the zakah. The author has said, Another situation where a person may refuse to pay the zakah, however in this situation he's not going to be ruled as a murtad, as somebody who's left a fold of Islam, is a situation where it's bukhlan, where a person, he doesn't pay the zakah, not because he disbelieves in the obligation of paying the zakah, but rather he is bakhil, he is being stingy and refusing to part with his wealth. So in this situation the money is taken from him forcefully, okay, and he is given ta'zir. Ta'zir is that he's disciplined by the authority. This can be in a variety of ways. It can be imprisonment, it can be banishing from the land, it can be taking some of his wealth and other matters, whatever the qadi he sees fit. And the issue here is uh, the issue of the ta'zir, how much it should be, etc. Uh, goes back to the qadi, goes back to the judge. The judge will decide what should be done. The author he says, وَتَجِبُوا فِي مَالِ صَبِيٍّ وَالْمَجْنُونَ The zakah is also obligatory in the wealth of the one who has lost his faculty of thought, meaning he's in a state of insanity, and also the one who is a sabi, also the one who is under puberty. So the author is mentioning this because here, these two, they don't have the ability to make an intention for an act of worship. <coughs> so in... In other acts of worship, we would say that you know the act of worship is not is not valid. But in the situation here, the act of worship of taking zakah from their wealth is valid. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in Surah Tawbah, "Khud min amwalihim sadaqa." Take from the wealth of the people sadaqa. So the zakah, zakatul mal, the zakah is attached to the wealth of the people. So even in this situation where the person is a child under puberty or the person is in a state of junoon, uh, lost the faculty of being able to think correctly, a state of um, uh, madness, then even in these situations where they cannot make the intention, wealth is taken from them, the zakat is taken from their wealth because the issue is that the zakat is connected to the wealth. Okay, it's not, so an intention doesn't have to be made here, rather the one who is taking it from them, the Wali Al-Amr, the leader of the state or those who he puts in charge, they will make the intention that is required uh, in this situation. And also in this mas'ala, uh, 
القول بالوجوب جاء عن خمسة من صحابة رضي الله عنهم that the, uh, the fatwa of taking from such a situation the, the zakah was given by five of the companions from the Muz'asha رضي الله عنها from the Muz'umar and Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما and from the Muz'jabir and Ali رضي الله عنهما أجمعين and this author or this fatwa of the Sahaba can be found in Musannaf Abd al-Razak and in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba رحمهم الله تعالى the author he says فَيُخْرِجُهَا وَلِيُّهُمَا so the ones who are in charge of these uh, people, meaning the child who is under the state, under the age of Bulugh and also the Majnoon, the, the one who is responsible for them, their wali, okay, the father, the parents or anybody who is in charge of them, they are the ones that will take the wealth to be distributed and to be given in zakah and they will make the intention on behalf of the Majnoon and the child. The author, he says, وَلَا تَجُوزُ إِخْرَاجُهَا إِلَّا بِالنِّيَّةِ as a further emphasis that the author is saying that zakah cannot be given except that there is an intention for it in the the prophet said that verily every action is required to have an intention for it to be rewarded so the uh, niya must be there and in the situation where the zakah is taken by force for the one who has uh, left the fold of islam due to refusing or the one who is bakhil meaning he doesn't want to give the zakah out of stinginess in these two situations taken by force and the niyyah is made by the imam or the leader of the state. The author, he says, وَالْأَفْضَلُوا أَنْ يُفَرِّقُهَا أَنْ يُفَرِّقَهَا بِنَفْسِهِ and it's better and preferred that the person distributes the zakah by himself. Why? Question to yourselves, why is it better and preferred that the person distributes the zakah by himself? طيب, the ulama they say, in order that he is sure that the wealth has given to the people that it, is the, that it should be going to and not given by mistake to wrong people. The person, if he distributes the zakah by himself, he's likely to be more um, diligent in, in regards to who, is, who it should go to. And also, And also so that he can get more reward because when he's distributing the wealth, to those who are deserving of it, he's going to tire himself out. And due to him tiring himself out, he's going to get more reward. And also so that it can be known that this is a person that does pay zakah and that people won't have uh, any bad thoughts about this particular person, right? Because they saw him out in the town, distributed the zakah to who it should be given to. A mas'ala to mention here, that if it's known that the Imam of the state where the Muslims are collecting the zakah to be distributed, if it's known that this particular Imam is going to give it to the wrong categories, he's not going to give it to the eight categories mentioned in Surah Tawbah, which will take in a while. If it's not going to be given to those categories and it's known that the Imam will do wrong, then the Hanabila, they say, the Hanbali scholars, they say, even in this situation, you still have to pay him. You still have to give the zakah to the Imam because it's his responsibility. So Ibn Taymiyyah in this situation, in this mas'ala, he said that the, um, the money is not to be given to the Imam if it's known that he's going to sp spend it in the wrong places. However, uh, if there's going to be a fitna or there's going to be harm from the Imam, from the leader of the Muslims to the Muslims who refuse to give him the zakah, then in this situation they should go ahead and they should give the zakah. And also a mas'ala to mention here that when paying the zakah, do you have to let the person know it's zakah? When paying the zakah, do you have to let the person know that it's zakah? So the ulama, as mentioned by Sheikh Sami ibn Abd uh, in his explanation, they say that you don't have to let them know, you don't have to let the people know that this is zakah that you are distributing to them. Because it's difficult for the poor to accept the reality that they're in, which is that they are relying upon people for sustenance. And for you to tell them that this is a care for you is quite difficult. Rather, it should be given in a way of gentleness and sadaqah and uh, not really letting them know that it's a care. Except in a position where the ulama, they say that it's known that a person in general, he doesn't take sadaqah. He normally refuses to take wealth and he's poor, he's mustahiq, he's deserving of zakah. So in this situation, you should tell the person that this is zakah because if you don't, he will end up losing out on taking what, his, what is his right. And Allah knows best. 
author he says وَيَقُولُ عِنْدَ دَفْئِهَا وَهُوَ أَخِذُهَا مَا ورد. The author he says and when he is paying the zakat the person is paying the zakat to the recipients then he should say the du'as مَا ورد. So here uh, Imam Al-Hajjawi rahimahullah ta'ala as many explainers said it's it's uh, habitual for him in his work that he doesn't actually mention the du'as that he's referring to. He just says uh, مَا ورد. He says that which has been narrated okay however in Rawdul Murbi'a Imam al-Bahuti uh, the famous explainer of this text he mentioned uh, that there's a few du'as so from them he said that the one who is giving the zakah should say the following du'a Allahumma ij'alha Allahumma ij'alha maghlaman wa la taj'alha maghlaman so this is found in Ibn Majah and Imam al-Bayhaqi also narrated it uh, as did others however Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala he said that it's not authentic. In Ta'if al-Jami'ah, Sheikh, Sheikh al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the dua is not authentic. Ta'ib. And also Imam al-Bahuti, in his Rawd al he mentioned another dua. أَمَّا مَا يَقُولُ أَخِذُ زَكَاءَ With regards to the one who is receiving the zakat, the dua that he should say is أَجَرَكَ اللَّهُ فِيمَا عَطَيْتَ وَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكَ فِيمَا أَنْفَقْتَ وَجَعْلَهُمْ لَكَ طَهُورًا Okay, so this dua is also to be said uh, by the one who is receiving the zakat. But again, many of the ulama, they said that this dua is not authentic. So this mas'ala of whether these two duas should be said or not, it needs some research from those who are students of hadith. Uh, to be able to identify whether these uh, narrations are authentic in any way, shape or form. However, there is authentic du'a that should be said uh, by the one who is receiving the du'a. It is the du'a which is found in Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made du'a for Abi Awfa, radiyallahu anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma salli ala ali Abi Awfa, O oh Allah, make salah upon the family of Abi Awfa. So this is something which can be said by the ones who are receiving the zakah, that they can make salah upon the one who is giving them zakah. طيب. The author, he says, وَالْأَفْتَلُوا إِخْرَاجُ زَكَاةِ كُلِّ مَالٍ فِي فُقَرَاءِ بَلَدِهِ وَلَا يَجُوزُ نَقْلُهَا إِلَى مَا تَقْصُرُوا فِيهِ الصلاة. In this masala, the author is talking about the fact that he holds and the humbly scholars hold that you it's better and more appropriate that the zakah wealth is distributed amongst the poor of the land where the person lives and is not permitted it's impermissible to give the zakah to a land which is the distance of where you would shorten the salah meaning if you travel from where you are to the land to the distance of that place where you're giving zakah and you are able to uh, make qasr salah then you are not allowed to give zakah in that land so if the basically 80 kilometers or more so if the land is 80 kilometers or more away from you then you are not allowed to send your zakah to that place طيب. from the evidences of this of this is the hadith which we've taken many times in Bukhari and Muslim the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him when he went to Yemen, to Yemen فَعَلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَ تُؤْخَذْ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ So Mu'ad teach them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory upon them zakah صَدَقَ صَدَقَ هِمْ in zakah and that it is to be taken from their rich and to be given to their poor. So the word there, the meaning of there is those who are in their locality, the, those who are in the community. And also the ulama, they mentioned that it's easier to pay zakah in the land that you live. And if the poor of the land uh, where the Muslims are who, are, who should be paying zakah, if it's seen by the poor of that land that the Muslims are not paying them zakah, but rather they're sending it abroad, then this will break the hearts of the poor Muslims in that land and this is something which needs to be avoided. The ulama they say in fa'ala ajza'at however if the person does send it to the land which is beyond 80 kilometers the land which is further than or the land which is far enough so that you can make qasr salah 80 kilometers or more if they do, if you do send your zakah to that land then the zakah would be considered as valid. However, the person would be sinful for doing so. How is this the case? The ulama they say, 
أما كونها تجزئون فلأنه دفعها إلى مستحقها um, The reason that it's valid in terms of uh, a zakah payment is because you still gave it to people from amongst the eight categories who are deserving of it. Okay, so you gave it to people from amongst the eight categories who are deserving of it. Therefore, the zakah is valid. But with regards to the fact that he's sinful, it's because you went against the, you went and you gave it in a land which was further than 80 kilometers away. And so they have a rule, they have a qaida, the ulama that hold this opinion that the person is sinful. Uh, however, the zakah is valid. They say, They say that if the prohibition is not connected to the actual act of worship itself, but rather it's an external, it's an external issue, then the act of worship is correct. However, you are sinful for falling into that prohibition. So the prohibition here is not that you are paying zakah to one of the eight categories. That part there of paying the zakah to the eight, one of the eight categories is permissible and correct. The prohibition that you have fallen into is for having paid it in a land which is further than 80 kilometers or more. That's where the prohibition lies. So it didn't actually, the prohibition wasn't actually connected to the payment of the zakah to the categories. Anyway, the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي بَلَدٍ لَا فُقَرَاءَ فِيهِ فَيُفَرِقُهَا فِي أَقْرَبِ الْبِلَادِ إِلَيْهِ The author now, he gives an exception to the rule that he mentioned. So previously he said that it's not allowed for the zakah to be sent out to a land which is 80 kilometers or more, right? Where the Salat al-Qasr can be made. He said, except and unless an exception is that you don't find any fuqara, you don't find any poor that are deserving of the zakah or anyone from the eight categories that are deserving of the zakah in the land that you are living in. So maybe a person, he lives in a land where there's very few Muslims for whatever reason and all of them are well off. This can happen, it can take place and no one there requires the zakah. So in this situation, the person who wants to pay the zakah will look to the closest land to him where Muslims are in need and he would send it to that land. The author he said, فَإِن كَانَ فِي بَلَدٍ وَمَالُهُ فِي آخر أخرج زكاة المال في بلده. If the person is in a situation where he is in a land and his land and his wealth is in another land, then he gives the zakat al-mal, he pays the zakah in the land that he is in. فَإِن كَانَ فِي بَلَدٍ وَمَالُهُ فِي آخر أخرج زكاة المال في بلده. So he's, the author is saying that if the person is in a land, he different to where his wealth is, he pays the he pays the zakah in the land where he is. طيب. والإلا في ذلك أن الأمطاع الفقراء تتعلق به في بلده. And the reasoning, the jurisprudic reasoning, is that the money is connected to the poor, the right the the rights of the poor over the money that he has is in the land where he is residing. And also so that the zakah is not given to a land which is 80 kilometers or more, which means that he will fall into a prohibition. And because um, the, the wealth is the reason for giving the zakah. Okay? فَوَجِبَ إِخْرَاجُهَا حَيْثُ وُجِدَ الْسَبَبِ and also uh, the wealth is the reason for giving the zakah therefore it becomes obligatory to pay the zakah wherever the wealth is to pay the zakah wherever the wealth طيب Sheikh Sami ibn Abd Rahman he mentioned a mas'ala he said what if a person has wealth in two different countries what does a person do in this situation question to yourselves if a person has wealth in two different countries where does he pay the zakah Barakallah fiqh, Jazakallah khair, very close, ahsant. So the, the scholars, they say that if the nisab, if the nisab in each country, if the wealth in each country doesn't reach the nisab, then in this situation, okay, he can pay in either of the countries because what he's going to do, he's going to join the wealth from both countries to reach the nisab. So in this situation, okay, he can pay, uh, so in this situation, he pays in either of the countries, right? 
This is what the ulama they say. If the wealth separate doesn't reach nisab unless put together, then can pay in any country. Okay, he pays in any of the countries. But if the, if both of them in either country are above the nisab level, then he can choose which country he wants to pay in. The author he says, "Wa fitratuhu fi baladin huwa fihi." However, with regards to the zakat al fitr, he has to pay it in the country where he is physically in. Okay, with regards to the zakat al fitr, he has to pay it in the country where he is physically in, because the ulama they mention a qaida, a rule. For example, it was mentioned by Sheikh uh, Sami Suqair in his explanation of Rawd al Murbi. He said, "Zakat al fitr tatbah al badan." Zakat al fitr it follows the body. So wherever the body is, wherever the person physically is, that's where he will pay zakat al fitr. Was zakat al mal tatbah al mal? Wherever, whereas zakat al mal, the zakat on the wealth. It follows the wealth. So wherever the wealth is, that's where the person would pay. So fitr has to be paid where the person is physically present. The author he says, وَيَجُوزُ تَعْجِيلُ زَكَاتِ لِحَوْلَيْنِ فَأَقَلُ It's permissible for the person to give zakat in advance up to two years, but no more. Up to two years, but no more. مثال ذلك رجل ملك مئة ألف ريال وحال عليه الحول فأراد أن يخرج زكاة المئة ألف لعامين فيجوز وذلك لأن لأنه بلغ نصاب. So a person he has uh, a th- um, he has a hundred thousand riyals and he wants to pay the hundred thousand riyals for two years. In this situation, he can do that. Why? Because his wealth is above the nisab. So in this situation where his wealth is above the nisab, he can do that. However, if the wealth has not reached the nisab level, then the person cannot do that. أما إذا لم يبلغ المال النصاب فلا. مثلا رجل عنده ثلاثمائة ريال ويعمل أن يأتيه مال وتكون أشهر آلاف ريال فقال سأقدم الزكاة فليس له ذلك. So a person he doesn't have uh, wealth which reaches the level of the nisab. For example, he has only three hundred ريال. However. He's very hopeful that trade is about to take place and he's going to get uh, another, uh, another 30, 40,000 riyals. So he says that now I want to give zakah for two years. In this situation, he's not allowed to because he hasn't, in the first instance, reached the nisab. So he's not permissible. Uh, the evidence, ala jawaz ta'jil, the evidence from the evidence is for giving the zakah in advance is the hadith which is collected, uh, authenticated by Imam Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani rahimullah ta'ala uh, as mentioned by Shaykh Sami Ibn Abdurrahman hafidhullah ta'ala the hadith of Ibn Masood radiyallahu anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ta'ajjala min al-abbasi sadaqata sanatayn that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took from his uncle Abbas zakah for two years so this is an evidence. The ulama they say also it's permissible because giving the zakah to in advance, two years in advance, is beneficial to the recipient recipients of the zakah. And uh, not being an obligation upon the owner to pay zakah until the wealth reaches. Uh, its completion, meaning the whole, the year is completed, is due to having mercy upon the owner of the wealth. Okay, meaning that we're not, it's not forced upon the owner of the wealth that you have to give zakah in advance. However, if the person uh, is happy to take that right away from himself, that he doesn't want to wait until the year is complete, then he can give his zakah in advance. But with regards to giving it in advance, more than two years, that is not permissible. The author, he said, However, it's not recommended to do this. It's not recommended to make ta'jil zakah fa'aqal, to give the ta'jil of the zakah for two years or less. The best is to give it in its time. Well, illa, and al asl ikhrajuha in that tamam al hawl. Fahua arfaq bil malik. Because the asl, the foundation in giving the zakah, is when the hawl has been completed, when the year has been completed, and not to give it in advance. Well, yanna hu rubama naqasa nisab, awtalafal mal, kaba tamam al hawl. And it could be the case that 
before the year has been completed for the year which you are giving in advance, maybe the nisab will go down or maybe the wealth will be destroyed. So you giving in advance would cause difficulty upon the person. ولكن قد تكون هناك مصلحة لتقديمها. However, there may be, Sheikh Mansour Saqib is saying as an explainer of the text, that maybe there are times when it's beneficial to give zakah in advance. كما لو حدثت مجاعة. Like for example, if there's a widespread famine, أو اشتد الفقر, أو poverty is widespread, أو احتاج المجاهدون المال, أو for example, the people of jihad, the mujahidun, are requiring wealth. فَيُقَدِّمُهَا نَظْرًا لِلْمَصْلَحَةً So in this situation, the person would give it in advance, the zakah, uh, due to the benefit that would come from that. Due to the benefit that would come from that. طيب, the author, he moves on to the next section. Uh, he says, بَابُ أَهْلُ الزَّكَاةً The chapter painting to who the recipients of the zakah are going to be. The author, he says, أَهْلُ الزَّكَاةِ ثَمَانِيَةً the people of zakah, there are eight categories. And this is found in Surah Tawbah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْآمِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَاتِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ فَرِيدَةً مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ In Surah Tawbah, you will find the verse pertaining to the eight categories of the recipients of zakah. The first important point to mention here, we'll break down who each category is and explain the terminology. But the first important point to mention here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of the verse, innama. He used the term innama. And innama is min ad adawat al hasr. Adawat al hasr is from the tools of restricting meaning. To the ulama, they say, al hasr huwa ithbat al hukum fi man dhukira wa nafihi fi man adahu. So this innama. It's establishing the ruling for the ones which are mentioned after innama and negating the ruling upon anybody outside of those that I mentioned after innama. This is what the word innama holds. It's for restricting a ruling or restricting a description or meaning after the word innama. So anybody not in those eight categories of zakah cannot receive zakah. طيب وقد قسم العلماء أهل الزكاة إلى قسمين. Okay, the ulama they have divided the categories of zakā recipients into two types. الأول, the first of them, من يأخذه لحاجته, the person who takes zakā due to a need that he has, ومصلحة نفسه, and due to a benefit found within himself for taking zakā. كالفقير والمسكين, like the one who is poor. Whether he's a faqir or a maskin, wal gharim, and the one who is in debt, wa ibn sabil, and the one who is a wayfarer and doesn't have money to complete his journey. The second division of the people who take zakah, man yaqudhu li hajat al muslimin, is the one who takes the zakah not for the benefit of himself, but rather for the benefit of Muslims in general. Kal mujahid, like the one who fights in the path of Allah, wal gharim fi islahi dhat al bain, and the one who is in debt because he's trying to bring. Peace between different fighting factions. And it's like. So this is a, just a quick summary that the ulama mentioned before delving into the topic. Al-Fuqara. Who are the Fuqara? Who are the poor? Al-Fuqara hum man la yajiduna shay'a. They are the ones that don't find anything to live on. Aw yajiduna ba'd al-kifaya. Or they find just enough to fulfill some of their needs. Taib. وضابط الفقير ضابط the controlling rule for determining who a فقير is الذي لا يجد شيء البتة the one who doesn't find anything to live on أو يجد نفقة أقل من نصف الكفاية or he finds wealth which suffices less than half of his basic needs and necessities مثال ذلك نفقته اليومية من ال ومن يع ومن يعول an example of that is that this person, uh, what is required for spending upon himself and those who he is responsible for is 20 riyals daily. He requires 20 riyals daily. However, وَلَيْسَ إِنْدَهُ إِلَّا خَمْسَ رِيَالَاتِ فَهُوَ فَقِيرٌ However, this person has nothing more than 5 riyals daily, so this person is going to be considered faqir because what he has is less than half of his needs. وَالثَّانِيَ الْمَسَاكِينَ 
yajiduna aktharuha aw nisfaha the second category is the miskin so now there's a differentiation in meaning between the faqir and the miskin both of them are poor however the miskin is slightly richer so this person he finds most of his uh, he, he finds that he has the ability to cover most of his uh, basic needs or at least half of his basic needs right وَالضَّابِطُ الْمِسْكِينَ أَلَّذِي يَجِدُ نِسْفَ الْكِفَاءِ أَوْ أَكْتَرُهَا وَلَا يَجِدُهَا كُلُّهَا فَهَذَا يُؤْتَبُ الْمِسْكِينًا يُؤْتَى مِنَ الزَّكَاءِ As we mentioned that this person who finds most of his needs are covered or at least half and above are covered so this person is considered a miskin والفقير والمسكين يعطيان من الزكاة حتى يستغنية and the فقير and the miskin they are given from the wealth of zakah to the extent where they are now able to be self-sufficient for at least up to a year. A point to mention here, and it's very important, as mentioned by Sheikh Sami ibn Abdurrahman and others, is that you shouldn't rush to take zakah and you are, unless you are truly eligible for taking zakah. So somebody may live quite a luxurious life. His needs are much, but these are self-created needs. These are not needs which are necessity. He might be driving a very fancy car very expensive car unable to pay the debt off on that car so now he applies for zakah and because he can't pay the debt off he's not able to pay or to cover some of his basic uh, needs either for himself or his family so in this situation what should he do he should sell the luxury car and buy a car which enables him to have cash flow and enables him to get around in a manner which is suitable for him uh, as a basic need likewise if a person is living in a luxury accommodation and they have run out of cash they shouldn't straight away go to the zakah rather they should sell that luxury accommodation uh, buy an accommodation which is lesser in living standard and allow them to have cash flow so a person shouldn't be quick to go and take zakah and when he's describing his situation to a scholar for fatwa he should be very truthful because otherwise you are taking wealth which doesn't belong to you and it belongs to others who are in need and if you take their right then you have to deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah keep us safe on the day of judgment Ameen the third category والعاملون عليها those who work in the distribution and collecting of zakah العاملون عليها وهم كل من يوكله الإمام لقيام على الزكاه so the amiluna alayha, those who work in the field of collecting and distributing zakah, they are all of those who the state has appointed in that situation, in that position. Wahum jubatuha wa And they are the ones who collect it, and they are the ones who distribute it, and they are the ones who store it, and they are the ones who count it in volume and weigh it, etc. Anybody who is related to the integral distribution and collection system of the zakah appointed by the state then they are also able to receive zakah this zakah is going to be given to them as a salary okay so they don't have to be poor to receive this zakah they can be rich but they are given the zakah as a recompense for the work that they have been appointed to do they can receive money in form of a salary from the zakah the fourth the fourth is Al-Mu'allafatu uh, Qulubuhum Al-Mu'allafatu Qulubuhum Means that those whose hearts we want to soften or bring closer to us Mimman yurja islamuhum From those that we are hoping that they will enter into Islam if we give them zakah Or kaffu sharrihi Or we are hoping that they will lessen their hatred towards Islam and their their, their um, the, the dangerous, the, the, the possibility of danger emanating from them towards the Muslims and Islam would be lessened if we give them a certain amount of zakah or it's expected that if we give zakah to this group of people then their iman will be increased, it's hoped that their iman will be increased so here there's many situations but the first thing to understand which is very important that this Zakat, it's not given to everyone, it's given to those who are leaders of tribes. Those who are the leaders of the tribes, okay? فَإِن لَمْ يَنْكُنْ سَيِّدًا فَلَا يُطَى Okay? If they are not uh, leaders of their tribes, if they don't have strength to influence uh, the people in their tribe, it's not given to them. طيب, so these مُؤَلَّفَةُ قُلُوبُهُمْ are divided into two categories. The first of them is the kuffar. 
Okay, so if it's hoped that this kafir is going to enter into Islam, then it's going to be given to them. Zakah will be given to them. Like it was given by the Prophet ﷺ to Sufwan ibn Umayyah until he became a Muslim. Okay, hatta dakhal al-Islam. Um, also from this is يُؤْتُونَ لِكَفِّ شَرِّهِمْ وَشَرِّ قَبَائِلِهِمْ إِنْ خِيفَ مِنْهُمْ شَرْ And it's also given to the leader of a tribe if it's feared that from that tribe there is going to be evil emanating and harm emanating from them towards the Muslims. طيب. And now الثاني, the second type of people that falls under this category of مؤلفة قلوبهم is المسلمون are Muslims. رَجَاءً أَنْ يَقْوِي إِيمَانُهُمْ In the hope that their iman will be strengthened. For example, if there is a tribe on the borders of Islam, of the Muslim land, the ulama say, and giving money from the zakah to them will encourage them to defend the rest of the Muslim land, then it's given to them. لِكَيْ يُسْلِمْ نَعْمْ And also in the hope that if you give to this person, whose Iman will increase and enter into Islam, then the rest of the tribe will enter into Islam. طيب. الخامس الرقاب وهم المكاتبون The fifth category is the riqab, are the slaves. Okay, And they are the mukatabun. They are the ones who have struck a deal with the owner to try to purchase their freedom. Okay, الذين اشتروا أنفسهم من أسيادهم فيدفعون المال على على الأقساط أو على أقساط فهؤلاء يؤتون ولو كانوا قادرين على التكسب. So these people they have agreed and entered into a contract with their owners that over a period of time we will pay in installments to free ourselves whatever we are worth and we agree with you the amount over a period of time and installments we're going to purchase ourselves bit by bit. So these person these people. Um, even if they can go out and earn money for themselves in other ways, zakat is given to them. They don't have to go out and earn money in other ways to purchase their freedom. Once the master has agreed, then the Muslims can give zakat to this Muslim slave to purchase his freedom uh, from the master. وَيُفَكُّ مِنْهَا أَلَسِيرُ الْمُسْلِمِ and also that falls under the category, this category of zakah from freeing the slaves is the freedom of the Muslim prisoner. طيب. This is also falls under the category of uh, freeing slaves. That the illa, the reason is that you are freeing a person's neck from imprisonment. And this is something which is hugely important. Uh, from the top of my memory, if I can remember, I believe it was Imam Shafi'i who said that if it was the whole of Baytul Mal needed to be spent to free the Muslims who are imprisoned in the dungeons of the non-Muslims uh, at times of war, then the whole of Baytul Mal, the whole of the Muslim treasury should be spent to do so. Well, And because freeing Muslim prisoners gives strength to Islam and honor to Islam. So it's like freeing slaves. The sixth category, Asadis al Ghadimu li Islahi Datil Bain, the one who falls into debt due to resolving issues between two fighting factions. Okay? And this person, he doesn't have to be poor. Al Ghadim li Islahi Datil Bain ka an yakuna bain jama'atain or rajulain or a'ilatain shiqaqun wa adawatun wa fitna. So they could be between two people, they could be between two families, two tribes, uh, disputes. Right? So this person, he takes it upon himself to bring these people together and to make sulh, to make unity between them. But the only way that this is going to be realized, the only way that this can take place is money is paid to, to, to soften them towards this agreement. So if the person has to pay money, has to take out money to bring these people to the table and create peace between them, then he can claim this money back as zakah, he can claim this money from zakah whether he was poor or not. As the author he just mentions now, and so the person is not taking it for his own benefit, he's taking it for the benefit of the Muslim. So whether he is poor or not, then he can take this money 
claim it back from zakat al-mal if he wishes to do so and the prophet sallallahu in the hadith in imam al-bayhaqi in al-kubra which is authentic la tahillu sadaqatu li ghaniyan illa li khamsa the prophet sallallahu said zakat is not permissible except for five aw gharim and from amongst them he mentioned the person who is in debt and this person is in debt due to rectifying problems that other people have awli nafsihi ma al-faqr another type of gharim the one who is in debt due to his own situation he's fallen into his into a debt due to his own situation and now he's unable to pay off his debt so he's considered poor الغارم لنفسه أي لشيء يخصه بأن يكون بأن يكون الدين عليه لحظ نفسه. so this person he fell into a debt due to his own needs. مثاله المديون الذي لا يقدر على السداد. so for example any person who's fallen into debt and is unable to pay off he can ask from the zakah. فهذا يؤتى لكن بشرطين. so this person is given but with two conditions. the first of them أن يكون فقيرا that this person is poor he's unable to pay off the debt. والضابط الفقر and the controlling rule of what is considered poor here عدم القدرة على الوفاء that a person is unable to fulfill the debt so the person is unable to fulfill the debt then that makes him fall under this category of uh, of being considered to take from the zakat second condition أن يكون الدين في شيء مباح that the debt should be in something which is permissible or if the person got this debt from an impermissible manner meaning that he took money to buy lots and lots of drugs for example for his for his consumption right and so then he made tawbah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this situation because of his tawbah to allah azawajal he can still take from zakat al-mal if he's poor and unable to pay the debt because he made tawbah however if he didn't make tawbah then of course he's not allowed to take because this would be i'ana ala al-muharram this would be helping a person to do that which is evil and haram. The, fifth, the seventh of them, فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَهُمْ الْغُزَاتُ الْمُتَطَوِّعَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا دِيْوَانَ لَهُمْ In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And this are the ones, the fighters, who are not conscripted officially in the army, meaning that their names are not officially in the state records as being soldiers of the state. Nor did they have a salary from the state. So these mujahidun who put their lives forward for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defense of Islam and the Muslims, they are to be given from the zakah. Walburad bi qawlihi and the intention fi sabilillah, humman wajda fi thalatatuquyud. They are the ones who have three restrictions. Ghuzat, that they are fighters. Number two, mutatawwi'un, that they are voluntary. Third, la diwan lahum wa la ratib. As I mentioned, they are not in the state records as being official uh, soldiers and nor they d- do they have official salaries. Athamin ibn Sabil al Musafir al Muqata'u bihi. The eighth category is that Ibn Sabil, the one who is a wayfarer and he has found himself in difficulty, not able to complete his journey. His person needs money to buy uh, his ability to complete the rest of his journey. Um, this is this is not referring to somebody who is in a country and wishes to leave his country on a journey. This is referring to somebody that's already on the journey. And whilst being on the journey, he has found himself in difficulty and therefore he needs money to help him along to complete his journey. If it's a situation that the person wants money to start his journey, this is not Ibn Sabil. However, at times, a person who wants money, zakat money, to start his journey can be given but not due to this category. He may be given due to being a faqir or a miskin. Well, that would be something which is fatwa based uh, individually. He would have to take his case to a scholar and get a fatwa for that. So the Ibn Sabil, this category, the wayfarer is the one who is on a journey but is unable to complete the journey and needs financial assistance. As the author said, دون المنشأ للسفر من بلده As I just explained, uh, excluding the one who wants to start a journey from his country. فَيُعْطَى قَدْرُ مَا يُوَصِلُهُ إِلَى بَلَدِهِ So the Ibn Sabil, the one who is stuck on a journey, he is given from zakah that which would suffice him uh, in order to complete his journey. وَمَنْ كَانَ ذَا إِيَالٍ أَخَذَا مَا يَكْفِيهِمْ 
And this is going back to This is returning to the mas'ala this, What the author mentions now Is additional information about the faqir and the miskin That if a person is not only responsible for himself But he's responsible for uh, other people أي من كان منهم دا عيال يعولهم فإنه يأخذ ما يكفيه له ولهم So if a person is responsible for other people like he's responsible for his parents and grandparents he's responsible for his wife, his children, his grandchildren and he doesn't have money to cover their needs then he can also take from the zakah to cover their needs لأن الدفع للحاجة فتقدر بقدرها نعم ويجو صرفها إلى سنف واحد Paying the zakah, it's permissible to give to one category only. It doesn't have to be distributed amongst the eight categories. What is the evidence? What is the evidence for this? The evidence for this in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِن تُبْدُوا صَدَقَاتِ فَنَعِمَّهِ وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you make your sadaqah, your zakah apparent, or you hide it and if you give it to the poor then it is better for you right whether you make your sadaqah hidden or you make it apparent and you give it to the poor then this is better for you so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse he only mentioned one category which is the poor so the ulama they say that it doesn't have to be distributed amongst the or all the categories, it can be given to only one category the author he says مؤنتهم. And it's um, recommended highly that the zakah is given to his relatives, the relatives of the person, who it's not obligatory upon him to spend on them outside of zakah. What this means is, for example, you cannot give zakah money to your wife because she is obligatory, it's your responsibility to spend upon her or to your parents or to your grandparents or to your grandchildren or to your children. So these situations you cannot give zakah to these family members because it's originally obligatory upon you to spend uh, zakah to them. So outside of these relatives, it's good for you to give zakah to your relatives because you also get the reward of silat rahim of joining relationships, okay? And you get the reward of spending upon them. And the reason you can't give to the ones that I mentioned, the exclusions like your grandparents, your parents, your grandchildren, your children, uh, your wife, etc., is because they are originally obligated upon you to spend on them. And if you use the zakah money to spend on them, it's as though you are using the zakah money to remove that which is an obligation upon you. And this is something which is not allowed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If anything was correct, then this was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions on what we took, then please feel free. And just a point to mention is that for the net next two weeks, uh, I won't be conducting a class as I'm traveling, inshallah. Uh, in the third week, we will restart with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa jazakumullah khair.